Hey guys, welcome back to a new video. In this video, we will start very simple by launching our first coroutine. So the first step is to actually include the coroutine dependencies in our project because they are not included in Kotlin by default. So make sure to open your build.gradle app file, scroll down to the dependencies block, and here you want to paste what I paste. I will also put the link in the description where you can get those dependencies. So simply paste it, click on sync now, and then we're good to go. Can go back into main activity and launch our first coroutine. Also, if you haven't already watched the first video of this series where I explain what a coroutine actually is, I highly recommend you to do that because it's very important to understand how they actually work if we want to use them in Kotlin. So now we can actually start a coroutine by writing global scope dot launch. And in this launch block, we will put the instructions that we want our coroutine to execute. And this is really the simplest way to start a coroutine, not really the best way. And you will learn why that is in this series in later videos. But however, global scope um, means that every coroutine needs to be started in a coroutine scope. You can see that here. And global scope just means that this coroutine will live as long as our application does. And of course, if a coroutine finishes its job, it will be destroyed and not kept alive until the application dies. But let's say our coroutine still has uh, instructions to do and we quit our application. That means our coroutine will also die because we declared that global scope. And inside of this launch block, we now want to define what our coroutine should do. And coroutines started from global scope will be started in a separate thread. So what we will write here will actually be um, executed asynchronously. So what we could do is we could just log in which thread this coroutine is currently running to show you that global scope actually launches a new thread or launches this coroutine in a new thread. So we could do this by simply logging log.d and I will quickly add a tag above here and import log of course. Well tag is equal to main activity then we can, we can put that tag here and write coroutine says hello from thread and then we can simply pass the, the name of the thread it is currently running in by writing thread.currentthread.name. And just to show you the difference, I will copy that line and paste it inside of our uncreate function, so not inside of our coroutine and just print hello from thread here. So we can actually see that this line will be executed from a different thread than this line. So we can now run our app and in logcat we will see hello from thread main. That is this line because of course that is executed in, inside of our application's main thread and then it prints Coroutine says hello from thread default dispatcher worker 2. That could be dispatcher worker 1 or 3 for you that um, you cannot really predict that in which thread the, the coroutine is launched, but it is definitely launched in another thread. In the last video, I talked about suspending coroutines so that we can simply pause and resume them. And similar to the sleep function of a thread, which will just block the thread for a particular amount of milliseconds. Um, coroutines have their own sleep function, which is called delay. So we can just stop our coroutine in the middle of execution by calling delay and entering a number of milliseconds um, for how long we want it to um, be delayed. So for example, oh, let's, let's choose 3000 milliseconds, so three seconds. And if we now run our app and take a look in Logcat, then, we'll, then you will see hello from thread main and after three seconds it will print coroutine says hello from thread default dispatcher worker one. And it is very important to know that delay works very different than the sleep function of a thread because delay will only pause the current coroutine and it will not block the whole thread which is a very big misconception of coroutine newbies. So I could actually bring up the picture of the construction sites from the last video again. So if one worker who represents a coroutine, a single coroutine, and the construction site re represents a thread, so if one worker pauses his work, it won't affect the other workers. They can just keep working. So that is the equivalent to delay. But if the work on the whole construction site is paused, 
It means all workers have to pause, which would be equivalent to thread.sleep. And one last thing, which is important to know, is that if the main thread finishes his work, then that means all other threads and coroutines will be cancelled. So even though they are started in, an, in another thread and are executed asynchronously, they will be cancelled if the main thread finishes his work. So we can easily see that if we increase that delay to 5 seconds, for example, launch our app and now take a look in LogCat. If I immediately quit that app now, so the main thread finishes when I quit it, then it won't print coroutine says hello because the coroutine is also cancelled when our main thread finishes. So if this video gave you a good first impression of coroutines, please leave a like and comment below what you liked about this video or comment below what you didn't like. Have a good day. See you in the next video. Bye bye.